we're going to use this and hook our equipment up like we have before. We have our voltage probe and we have our low amps probe. In this particular case, we've got a nice thing on the low amps probe saying this is pointing toward the positive side to help us keep the directionality correct. This is a Ford system. There is a, this is a multi-strike ignition system, also called a multi-spark ignition system. Sometimes we have three like this at idle. Other times we get one and a half, two at idle. It depends on conditions. We come off idle, we'll go to one strike. The first strike is what we use for our measurement of our current flow. And it can vary with each one of them, but only the first strike is the one we're looking at. And as you can tell, this is running about seven and a half amps. We go off idle a little bit, the other ones shrink down. They do three strikes to get better combustion at low engine speeds. Once we bring it up, we have a look at it and we discuss it. Remember, this is a two-wire system. The rise time is totally controlled by the PCM. The height of the voltage is controlled by B+, plus, the quality of ground on the computer and getting back to the PCM, and the B plus supplied. So remember, there's a lot of things involved. This should be 6.5 to 7.7. .7. It's 7.5 amps. It's right where we would expect it. If the current flow is low, look on the top of the coil for cracks and bubbling of the seal. This is one of the things we've seen on Ford from high temperature operation. They get cracking and bubbling and moisture gets inside and it goes to changing resistance of the wiring. The rise time should be the specification 1.3 to 1.7. This is 1.4. But again, remember, that is controlled by the PCM. If that's wrong, look at the PCM. It's the source of this information. Now, the st how fast this rises is a function of coil resistance. Rising fast and sloping off later is usually a sign we have a shorted coil. And that usually winds up with a slightly higher than normal current flow. If the peak amps are lower than normal, we're going to go back to our same thing. We're going to check the coil's B plus supply, looking at the patterns of failures and seeing what's going on. Low primary current, you need to go check the coil's resistance, and we're going to have to go and measure it across the coil. Measure these two wires. The, the specification says the coil resistance should be a half ohm between the red and the green wire. Here we're reading 3.67 ohms. That's not a half, so if I were you, I would check a couple coils and compare each a couple of coils, a good and a bad, to see which one I think is the problem. This ends the coil primary current testing. We gave you a lot of places to go back and get diagnostic directions. Make sure you review this enough time to fully understand it before moving on to another section.